let's spend a couple of minutes talking about the shape of the average total cost curve and really three parts to it, if you will. The first part we mentioned was the average total cost curve that as you increase output, your cost per unit decreased. So it's cheaper per unit the more you produce. This first range we call economies of scale. You'll see that term frequently in economics. It simply means the more you do with something, the cheaper you can do it. Over this economies of scale range, we can also call this a decreasing cost range. The company is going to get cheaper production, but that's no guarantee that they're going to sell it. The idea of what, can we, what kind of profit can we make is going to derive from the demand curve. How much revenue are they making? It's no good to produce 3,000 units if you can't sell the 200 of them. But if we did produce out to this range, our cost per unit would decline. Uh, reasons for that. You're distributing your fixed costs among a much wider range of output, much larger range of output. The more you produce, the better you get at something. We call it a learning curve experience. The more often you do something, the more efficient, the faster you become. When we're producing in larger quantities, we're able to buy raw materials at lower per unit prices because we buy them in bulk. Those sorts of reasons explain economies of scale. At the far end, let me jump to the far end. The curve is going to turn up, average total cost curve, which means from this level of output on out, as you produce more units, your cost per unit is increasing. What we will call diseconomies of scale, or if you like, increasing costs. What causes that? Well, when you're operating your factory on a very high volume, you're going to have more equipment breakdown. You're going to have morale problems with people who are getting stressed out from working too hard, and occasionally they may create problems for you in the form of sabotage or shoddy work. You're going to have more mistakes. You're going to have log jams in your flow of physical goods. If you've got a receiving dock out back and you've got trucks delivering raw materials and you're operating at a very high volume of output, you've got a lot of material coming into your receiving dock and it's going to get all jumbled together. And when I look at you and say, hey, go find me a five-gallon can of red paint, it may take you an hour to find it. That causes our costs to rise. So we have these two parts to the curve. And now when we first presented it, we said there was some middle point at a low point for the curve, but in fact, this may be a range. This is the, uh, let's call this the first and the third parts to the curve. Look at the second part of the curve. It may in fact be flat. That is the minimum point, the lowest point on the curve, may not be a point, it may be a range. Let's say here, between 400 units and 750 units of output. Well, what's going on as I produce in this range? Well, these are constant costs, that is, when I produce 400 units and I read up, I say, well, each unit costs me $9. And if I produce 401 units, well, each unit costs me $9. So it's costing me the same amount of money for each additional unit, what we'll call constant costs. And sometimes called constant returns to scale. So we've got three different shapes to the average total cost curve, and not all of them always apply quick couple of examples. What would you think if you saw an average total cost curve that looked like this? Okay, let's get all this out of the way. What's going on with this average total cost curve? The more you produce, the cheaper it is per unit. It's got economies of scale over the entire range of production. That's fine. You should be comfortable looking at that and seeing what it means. It means, for example, if I produce 400 units and I read up here, I say, well, I can do that for $9 a piece. But if I produce 750 units, well, I can do that for $3 a piece. So there's a real advantage if I can operate on a large scale, assuming I can sell it. We'll get to that later. One other example here. What would you think if you saw an average total cost curve like that. What is that? That is constant costs, the same cost per unit over the entire range of production. Constant costs. Now, parenthetically, and we'll see this more as we go along, when the average total cost curve is constant or flat, it is the same as the marginal cost curve. And that's going to be very important to remember. Now, let's add one last consideration. 
kind of combining these ideas. There's an average total cost curve. Where is the marginal cost curve? What we have to remember is when the average total cost curve is falling, the marginal cost curve is somewhere beneath it. Doesn't matter where, just draw it below it. And when the average cost, cost, total cost curve is climbing, the marginal cost curve is above it. And what did we just say? When the average total cost curve is constant, it's the same thing as the marginal cost curve. So over this flat range, marginal cost and average total cost are the same thing. We'll be referring those to those repeatedly throughout the course. So be comfortable with them. Good, thanks.